it, it's just a very small part of your job uh, when you're the chief of public information. And uh, unfortunately, when I got to a higher level of management, I wasn't allowed to do it anymore. And it's one of the more fun things to, uh, to do. Actually, I started in radio when I was nine. And uh, I luckily, I went to uh, schools in, in Cleveland, Ohio where there was a one of the very first FM stations in the country which was strictly run by the Board of Education. My main job was telling the story of NASA to the general public through various media. Uh, the jur uh, journalism and the, uh, the news media was of course one of the most important and uh, luckily I like uh, the news people and uh, always enjoyed working with the uh, the reporters. And the space program is not about space. The space program is about we people on Earth and uh, enlarging our uh, our capabilities in technology and science in order to produce better lives here on Earth uh, and in the future. I never gave space a thought when I was a kid. When I was a kid, there wasn't anything like space. There was Buck Rogers and that was it. Uh, so we didn't, I never gave it a thought. I joined the Air Force and I decided I'd be the best pilot I could be. And to do that, I had to uh, get more education, which I did. And then I had to go to a test pilot school, which I did. Um, and what I found when I was through with all of that is that uh, all the things that I had learned and all the things I had done made me a very good uh, candidate for the space program. So it was, it, it was a side issue for me and I never gave it a thought until NASA asked for applicants back in 1964 and I threw my name in and uh, ended up being selected in 1965 or 66 actually, the spring of 66. Uh, but I had never given space a thought because I never thought I would it was, it was just something that was out of reach. You know, it was something that I never thought would happen. So I decided I'd be the best pilot I could. And uh, when, when I worked at that, I realized that, yeah, I could, uh, you know, there are some other doors that are open, and I got in the space program. The problem with flying to the moon, or the problem with flying any spacecraft, or flying a space shuttle, or flying anything like that, is a skill. It's a rote skill that you learn. It's like driving a car. It's like flying an airplane. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that you develop. It's not an intellectual uh, function. And I believe that there are intellectual things in this world today that are much more important than the skill that you learn to fly a spacecraft. Okay? I, think the, I think the condition the world is in, I think the way this country is having its problems, uh, these are intellectual uh, issues that need to be resolved. And I think they're much more important than going to the moon. What was it like to be the farthest away from any human being ever? Well, I, I would never know. Uh, yeah, I was uh, in a spacecraft by myself around the moon, but you know, there were six other guys that did the same thing. Uh, but I guess when you calculate the distances, I might have been further away from the guys on the surface than anybody else, and that's why I got into Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, but I wouldn't, I, I, I don't know, I, I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> Is there anything that you, uh, that you didn't do that you wish you would have done? that you would have had the opportunity to do? I can't think of a thing. Um, things that I wish I could have done would have been to be commander on a follow-on flight. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as our flight was concerned, I did everything that I had on the schedule. Uh, it, in fact, we did a lot more than we had on the schedule. Uh, we completed all the science, plus, plus, plus. Um, and uh, the flight was very successful. So I can't think of anything related to our flight that I wished we had done. What do you think about the future of the space program? Um, as far as what do you think about you know civilians going up and you know able to experience space? Uh, well, <laughs> civilians going up into space are going to experience 15 minutes of it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's not going to space. Uh, they're spending a couple hundred thousand dollars to go up to 67 miles, and that's it. They're going to go straight up and straight down. If civilians actually get to go into space, they should go into orbit. That's that's where that's going into space. Yeah. 
But you see the difference is it takes about 3,500 miles an hour to get to 60, 67 miles. It takes 17,000 miles to go into orbit and no civilian agency is going to do that except maybe uh, well, SpaceX and ATK and, and, and uh, Orbital Sciences, people like that, uh, they're putting payloads into, into, into Earth orbit to go to the ISS. And maybe the day will come when they'll be flying civilians too. But uh, that's, where, that's the real spaces when you go into orbit, you go around the world. What about the future of the space program? Where would you like to, where would you like to see the space program go from here on out? Oh, I think as far as the space program in the future, we're going to have to have lots and lots of patients. Uh, see, the problem, problem with us as people is that we think of what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next week. We have a hard time thinking about what's going to happen next year. Uh, if something, if, 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 if an agency like NASA stubs their toe, we all get upset about it. And we don't really think about the fact that uh, that's all going to be corrected and 10 years from now will be a whole different story. Probably 1,000 years from now we're going to be doing stuff that we never dreamed of. Uh, so we have to have a long-range view. That's, that's, that's my point about the space program. It's here to stay. We're going to stay. We're going to keep doing it. It's not, it's not going away. Uh, the space program is absolutely essential to the survival of the human species because we're going to have to find some other place to go someday. Now that's a long, long ways in the future. But we need to have kind of a far eastern philosophy about how we do things and not think about tomorrow, but think about a thousand years. Yeah. And in a thousand years, we're going to be doing incredible stuff. So, I, yeah, I have, a, I have, I, I have a, a great, I'm very optimistic about the space program uh, in the long range view. In the short range, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what we're doing. Is that just the, the way leadership is or the way... Uh well, I, th I think it's just human. I think it's human nature. If you re well, if you you wouldn't remember back to the Apollo days, I know. But looking back at the Apollo days, as the flights went on, people started complaining that they didn't want to watch the flight because they were missing a basketball game, and that's human nature. They get so they they get so used to something that it becomes something that they're not really interested in, and so it goes in cycles. If we if we discover something out in space that's really really earth shaking, world shaking. Uh, then there'll be we'll have lots and lots of money to do whatever we want to do out there. In the meantime, and and we get that experience from uh, the the scientists who do the Antarctic work. Mm -hmm. If they find something down there that's unusual, then all of a sudden they get lots of grant money and they get lots of you know money to do what they're doing. And as the days go by, if they don't find something new, that money dries up and they and it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think space program is a cycle just like that. Uh, I think that's uh, I think that's the future of the space program. That's the way it's going to be is up and down, until but the ups and downs are going to keep going up. So I think uh, someday in the future we're going to be able to do the things we want to do. One last question. Yeah. What was Mr. Rogers like in real? Wonderful. The nicest person I've ever met. Uh, he was very different. Fred was, uh, as, as you probably know, he's a child psychologist. He graduated from Rollins College over here in Orlando. He went to Canada and started a children's show and brought that down to the country in Pittsburgh. Uh, and, and, and he did Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and he did like 800 shows. Um, he was so into child psychology that people misunderstood him a little bit because he did not understand an off-color joke. He honestly didn't understand it. He was just, his mind was so into uh, the children and I'm gonna tell you, he is the best thing that ever happened to kids. Uh, and no razzmatazz, just plain talk from him to the kids and, and, and what things are like. As a matter of fact, I got involved with him because he was doing a series on fathers leaving and coming back. Like dad goes down to the store and he comes back. Dad goes to work and he comes back that night. Oh, well, yeah, well, dad goes to the moon, but he comes back. And that's where he and I made the connection. And so we did a show here at the Cape. And the upshot of that was I did a whole bunch of shows with him back in Pittsburgh after that, and we had a lot of fun. He's a wonderful guy. He got me to write my first book. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, he, he, didn't, he didn't get me to write it. He helped me publish it. I wrote a book of poetry, and he introduced me to the people who could publish it, and then he wanted me to do another book, and I did a children's book, and he did the forward in it. And uh, so that was my relationship with Fred. We had a very, very good relationship.